Hey guys, it's Rosalyn back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing good today. I'm doing blessed and highly favored and hope the same for you. If this is your first time coming to my channel, welcome, namaste, love and light and love and blessings and many blessings are yet to come for you. And thank you for the love and support. And if you have not already, please like and subscribe, even hit that notification bell so you know when I'm about to upload my next video. And if you feel like you resonate with my video, please give me a big thumbs up. And if you feel like you're comfortable, go ahead and drop me a few lines. I love to get the positive feedback. And for my returning subs, what's up fam? Thank you for the love and support as always. Love and light, love and blessings to you and many blessings are yet to come for you and namaste. Today, my video is about Twin Flame 101. My past has strengthened me for a better future. Guys, it took me a lot of courage to make that other video because that is truly, you know, that was really hard to do, especially when you have been vulnerable with other people. And they, I've, I mean, I've had positive uh, remarks about the situation, but I also had negative, you know, response about it you know people said I was crazy or um you know people was like you know if it's so easy you know you should you got this proof you should be able to do that it's not that easy when people got their hands on all stuff and they're just seeing dollar signs or whatever the case may be they will stop you they will stop you and you know I've been having to deal with this and I'm just trying to you know find a lawyer that will have enough courage to go ahead and want to take this case because it's like when they see it and they see that I have proof they're all okay for it but the next you know I've been ignored and you know it's just it's just really crazy that I had to really go through this and you know and it's just with people represent my dad you know there's this um this just been very nice and very generous and you know stop by and you know check on me will not stop by but send me messages every now and then which is very good but then I've also had people shun you know they they back up from me and they act kind of different from me you know when they find out which is sad also but it's just today it's just so many things I've been reflecting on and I'm just like wow you know it's that time you know I knew things was going on and I didn't know exactly how things were going to happen and the way they were going to happen but I knew I had to tell my story and it's still I feel like I have something to say because it's just like I was having so many negative thoughts and I would cry to God saying you know I'm trying to get past this I'm trying to be positive you know what I'm saying I, I'm you know not saying trying but I'm going to but it just seemed like more stuff kept coming out coming out and then when I'm ref you know when I'm actually reflecting on it and looking at it and taking the grasping the concept of it it's like it wasn't for me to have negative uh, thoughts. It was for me to, you know, take it and look at it in a different way, look at a different perspective. And it was like, this is your memories. We needed you to remember these things, you know, and it was just like, I would have good memories, you know, asking my dad when I first talked to him when I was five, you know, um, asking, did he have any girl, you know, any children? And he was just like, yeah, I have a little girl, you know, a cute little girl and she's around your age and stuff like that. And I remember that and it really warmed my heart to remember. But then I also had really bad memories of, you know, my mom and my dad getting into arguments and they were talking about that boy, which was referring to my dad, Prince. And they were talking about a child, which was referring to me. Um, about my, my adopted father embezzling money from this guy. He was a singer, you know, and he wanted to see his child. That's all he wanted to see, but he just asked for more money. And then, you know, my adopted dad was like, what money? I don't know what you're talking about. He was like, he's told me he sent money, money we've never seen. And she was just like saying that he had another woman on the side and they were going to, you know, get married and go on about the, with them and the money coming to find out that was you know he ended up doing that like about two years two three years later you know he took the will he was supposed to give it back to me on my 18th birthday my mom and him made a decision that on my 18th birthday he would go ahead and give me the will and trust in my dad's uh deeds to the house and all this stuff he would give me that stuff 18 came and gone my mom was just like on my 18th birthday hey did you get any paperwork in the mail you know your dad was supposed to send you some you know some stuff and I was just like no you know she waited for a few days to ask me you know give him you know a couple of days he might be late never received it 
now when my dad passed away and I started asking questions and I'm just wondering why, you know, why all of a sudden I'm starting to remember these things, why it takes something so traumatic. And then all of a sudden these negative thoughts would come around, like why every time I went to their house, I was so anxious about ready to leave, why I would lose track of time, why I would feel sick, sometimes dizzy, you know, back in, was it 1981, no, 90, 91, 92. Um, I was having really bad night terrors about my dad, about him being like a superhero or whatever, having this big bag of money with dollars coming out like a cartoon, saying that he was taking me away because this is not my real family. He's taking me to my real family. And I would have these, like, wake up screaming, saying, Daddy, you know, trying to figure out what these nightmares are about. Then they took me to a therapist where I can be up under hypnosis. They asked, can they put me up under hypnosis so I can stop having these really bad night terrors? Because my, my adopted dad said, you know, she's been having these on and off since she was little. And she wakes up screaming at night, we can't get any sleep. So they asked me, did I want them to be in there in the session? I told them, someone was telling me to tell them no. So I told them, no, I don't want them in there. I don't feel comfortable with them being in here. You know, and I told him about the dreams I was having about plants. He was like, you know what, you kind of favor him a little bit. And then, you know, he went into hypnosis and saying, you know, ask me some questions. You know, it's like, you feel like, you know, this person's represent. you know, he might be a catalyst for something or, you know, a mascot for something. Or, you know, it might be deeper than that. You know, because I told him the way I found out I was adopted, everybody else knew about it before I did. You know, and I had to find this out on my birthday. <laughs> you know, so that was just really messed up. So it's just all these 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 thoughts was coming back and I just prayed to God. I said, you know, I'm just I'm trying to stay on that positive path, but more and more, you know, is my ego talking to me and it was just like today I had to realize those were not negative thoughts. It was just the fact that your your memory's been so badly tampered with. Because my family found out how they were listening in on the therapist, which was crazy. They listened in on the therapist and found out how to be able to put somebody up under hypnosis to make them forget. So every time I came to their house, even during adult, they were putting me up under hypnosis to make me forget. I would lose track of time. I would be lightheaded, wondering why I'm having headaches when I leave. There are people telling me once every time I leave their house, I always act different. And I'm always wondering why. I'm forgetting things more often than I usually do after leaving their house. And now all of a sudden, these, since I haven't talked to them in almost two years, all these memories are starting to come back. Me being teased about me being the trust fund kid, you know, my stepmom's friends, you know, kids bragging about they knew who my father was and weren't going to tell me. I was just a trust fund baby. You know, my stepmom and them bragging about the fact that they knew that Prince was my father calling him out of money, calling him out of concert tickets and stuff like that. He's been back and forth here, but, you know, I had to live with that, that he's been back and forth here to come see me, and they would tell me, you know, hey, can you come over here for a surprise dinner? You know, can you come over here? We have a surprise for you, but anytime there are surprises, a lot of times that they had surprises, it was like as in belittling me in front of a group of people, talking down to me in front of family, in front of my children. So it was like when you had surprises like that, I'm already having these weird feelings and I see all these Suburbans and limousines parked up and down the street. I didn't know whether you were trying to kill me in the middle of Illuminati you know, ceremony. I didn't know what it was. But when I started having that gut feeling, it was with people I couldn't really trust. And this was my family. I had to live with that every day knowing that was my father came to visit me. And I would have never known because it was just like, I asked him, was that my dad that came to visit? You know, they always asked me, what, how would I feel if I met my family? What did I do? What would I do if I found out my family was looking for me? And anytime I would ask them, you know, did somebody reach out to you? Did somebody say something to you? Or just answer the question. They would never answer my question. So it, this is something I have to live with every day. But it was just like I used to wish that I didn't have to go through that. But like I said in many videos, if I wouldn't have went through what I went through, I wouldn't be able to tell you guys when you're going through some something, especially if you had a really treacherous past like me. Um, you can be able to use that as a tool to get be, be able to be a better person because now I know I'm physically healing from it because I can actually tell you about this and not cry. 
you know, and it's not about me being detached or unemotional. I had to deal with that. I had to face for the fact I had to let that go. You know, I had to remember, you know, all these things because they're going to come up, you know, questions are going to be, you know, if, you know, if this is your dad, how come, you know, you're just coming out now? Because my family tried to make sure I never remembered my dad. Anytime I would even mention him growing up, I used to get punished for it. Anything that, like, if I played the piano like him learning Purple Rain, I would get the mess beat out of me by my dad. So anytime I would bring up Prince, I was going to an institution because I was thinking of him and obsessed with him. You're going to think I was crazy if I kept talking about him. So I was forbid for even watching anything when around my adopted dad that had anything to do with my father. Anytime my dad would call, he would hang up the phone on him. It was always my stepmom that was trying to initiate things when she was being secretive or it was my mom that was really, really trying to get me to see him. But my adopted dad made sure that I never got my proof. You know, to prove that because once they found out I talked to the lawyers, all of a sudden they wanted to help me buy houses. They wanted to help me buy cars. But I'm like, you guys are broke. Because I was always wondering why, you know, even though they were ex-military, you know, they give you some kind of money when you retire military. But if you see the way they live, it's just like, how are you able to afford these things? How are you able to go all about like this? Because the way they, they spent money like that all the time. So I'm just like, where is all this money coming from? And memories coming back, going to the bank. And they're saying, oh, I know this is not your account because I'm dressed up in a housekeeper outfit. They knew that wasn't my bank account. Now I'm just like, damn, y'all had a bank account put in my name. And as soon as my dad passed away, y'all tried to make sure y'all erased that. So, yeah, you know, I had to really go through all these things and, you know, saying, okay, these happened to me. This is what happened to Prince, Prince's daughter. This is what I got punished because of who my father was. This is what Prince's daughter had to go through. So I'm using this as a tool. Things are going to get better for me. I pray every day. I meditate. You know, I think positive. And now I had enough courage to come and tell you guys my truth, my story on what I went through. This is what Prince's daughter had to go through just because she was Prince's daughter. Yeah. So you guys keep me in your prayers and I will definitely keep you in mind. If you go ahead and if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Even hit that notification bell so you know when I'm about to upload my next video. And if you feel like you resonate with my video and you want to leave a comment, I love to get the positive feedback. And I always make sure I reply on every comment. And I will see you on my next video. Peace and be wild. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, I'm listening to eight hour deep sleep music, peaceful music, relaxing, meditation, music, sleep. All right. And I will talk to you on my next video. Peace and be wild.